presentation is by group 3 i fabe imran on behalf of other group members is presenting this topic power supply a power supply is an electrical device that supplies electric power to an electric load the primary function of a power supply is to convert electric current from a source to the correct voltage current and frequency to power the load as a result power supplies are sometimes referred to as electric power converters Examples of later include power supplies found in desktop computers and consumer electronic devices. Further discussing it, we have all power supplies have a power input connection which receives energy in the form of electric current from a source and one or more power output connections that deliver current to the load. The source power may come from the electric power grid such as an electrical outlet energy storage devices such as batteries or fuel cells generators or alternators solar power converters or another power supply the input and output are always hardwired circuit connections so some power supply employ wireless energy transfer to power their loads without wired connections further discussing it we have functional Power supplies are categorized in various ways including by functional features for example a regulated power supply is one that maintains constant output voltage or current despite variations in load current or input voltage conversely the output of an unregulated power supply can change significantly when its input voltage or load current changes adjustable power supplies allow the output voltage or current to be programmed by mechanical controls for example knobs on the power supply front panel or by means of control input or both an adjustable regulated power supply is one that is both adjustable and regulated let's see modes in mode 1 solar energy generation and short power grid to marine distribution cabinet and then to load mode number 2 solar energy generation and short power grid to marine distribution cabinet to load and mode 3 solar energy generation and short power grid to marine distribution cabinet and then to load next term we have packaging packaging power supplies are packaged in different ways and classified accordingly a bench power supply is a stand alone desktop unit used in applications such as circuit test and development Open frame power supplies have only a partial mechanical enclosure sometimes consisting of only a mounting base these are typically built into machinery or other equipment rack mount power supplies are designed to be secured into standard electronic equipment racks an integrated power supply is one that shares a common printed circuit board with its load let's see power conversion method Power supplies can be broadly divided into linear and switching types. Linear power converters process the input power directly. In switching power converters, the input power is converted to AC or to DC pluses before processing by components that operate predominantly in non-linear mode. For example, transistors that spend most of their time in cutoff or saturation. Next we have DC power supply. A DC power supply is one that supplies a constant DC voltage to its load. Depending on its design, a DC power supply may be powered from a DC source or from source such as power mains. Next we have AC to DC supply. DC power supplies use AC main electricity as an energy source. Such power supplies will employ a transformer or rectifier is used to convert the transformer output voltage to a varying DC voltage which in turn is passed through an electronic filter to convert it into unregulated DC voltage the filter removes most but not all of the AC voltage variations the remaining AC voltage is known as ripple further discussing it we have In a switch mode power supply the AC mains input is directly rectified and then filtered to obtain a DC voltage the resulting DC voltage is then switched on and off at a high frequency by electronic switching circuitry thus producing an AC current that will pass through a high frequency transformer or indicator 
switch mode power supplies are usually regulated and to keep the output voltage constant the power supply employs a feedback controller that monitors current drawn by the load smps often include safety features such as current limiting or a crowbar circuit to help protect the device and user from harm next we have power factor what is power factor the switch mode power supplies used in computers have historically had low power factors and have also been significant sources of line interference due to induced power line harmonics and transients in simple switch mode power supplies the input states may distort the line voltage waveform which can adversely affect other loads and can cause unnecessary heating in wires and disruption equipment further discussing what is capacitive power supply a capacitive power supply uses the reactance of a capacitor to reduce the main voltage to a smaller ac voltage next we have linear regulator the function of a linear regulator is to convert varying dc voltage to a constant often specific low dc voltage in addition they often provide a current limiting faction to protect the power supply and load from over current excessive potentially destructive current a constant output voltage is required in many power supply applications but the voltage provided by many energy sources will vary with the changes in load impedance next we have ac power supply an ac power supply typically takes a voltage from a wall outlet and uses a transformer to step up or step down the voltage to the desired voltage some filtering may take place by isolation transformer and auto transformer in cases when the power source is direct current like an automobile storage battery an inverter and step up transformer may be used to convert it to ac power portable ac power may be provided by an alternator powered by diesel or gasoline engine for example at a construction site in an automobile or boat or backup power generation for emergency services some kinds of ac power conversions do not use a transformer it is called as line conditioner furthermore we have if the device is designed to provide backup power it may be called uninterruptible power supply a circuit may be designed with the voltage multiplier topology to directly step up ac power formally such as application was vacuum tube ac or dc receiver so if we have phases of ac power supplies ac power supplies can be divided into single phase and three phase system the primary difference between single phase and three phase ac power is the consistency of delivery next moving to frequency AC power supplies can also be used to change frequency as well as the voltage they are often used by the manufacturers to check the suitability of their products for use in other countries 23 volt 50 hertz or 115 60 hertz or even 400 hertz for avionics testing you can see image 2 so moving to ac adapter an ac adapter is a power supply built in ac main power plug Let me elaborate AC adapters. AC adapters are known by various other names such as plug pack or plug in adapter or by slang terms such as wall ward. AC adapters typically have single AC or DC output. Universal AC adapters have interchangeable input connectors to accommodate different AC main voltages. AC adapters with AC outputs may consist of passive transformer or the main employ switch mode circuitry moving further to programmable power supply a programmable power supply is one that allows remote control of its operation through an analog input or digital interface such as rs232 or gpib control properties may include voltage current and in the case of ac output power supply's frequency they are used in wide variety of applications including automated equipment testing crystal growth monitoring semiconductor fabrication and x-ray generators 
Next we have integral microcomputer. An uninterruptible power supply takes its power from two or more sources simultaneously. It is usually powered directly from the AC mains while simultaneously charging a storage battery. Should there be a dropout or failure of the mains, the battery instantly takes over so that load never experiences an interruption. Next we have transmission of high speed data. So a high voltage power supply. A high voltage power supply is one that outputs hundreds of thousands of volts. A special output connector is used that prevents arcing, insulation breakdown and accidental human contact. Federal standard connectors are typically used for application above 20 kV through other types of connectors. Next we have high voltage power supplies and their energies. High voltage power supplies typically apply the bulk of their input energy to a power inverter which in turn derives a voltage multiplier or high turns ratio, high voltage transformer or both to produce high voltage. The high voltage is passed out of the power supply through the special connector and is applied to voltage divider that converts it to low voltage metering signal compatible with low voltage circuitry. Next moving to bipolar power supply. A bipolar power supply operates in all four quadrants of the voltage, current Cartesian plane meaning that it will generate positive and negative voltages and currents as required to maintain regulation. When its output is controlled by a low level analog signal, it is effectively as low bandwidth operational amplifier with high output power and seamless zero crossing. Further moving to specifications. The suitability of a particular power supply for an application is determined by various attributes of the power supply which are typically listed in the power supply specification. Commonly specified attributes for a power supply include Efficiency of power conversion, how long it can supply energy without refueling or recharging operating and storage temperature ranges. Let's discuss some common abbreviations. SCP short circuit protection, OPP over power protection, OCP over current protection, OTP over temperature protection, OVP over voltage protection, UVP under voltage protection. Next we have thermal management. The power supply of an electrical system tends to generate much heat. The higher the efficiency, the more heat is pulled away from the unit. There are many ways to manage the heat of a power supply unit. The types of cooling generally fall into two categories, convection and conduction. Now discussing two categories of thermal management. Common convection method, common conduction method. Common convection methods for cooling electronic power supplies include natural air flow, forced air flow or other liquid flow over the unit. Common conduction methods include heat sinks, cold plates and thermal compounds. Next we have overload protection. Power supplies often have protections from short circuit or overload that could damage the supply or cause a fire. Fuses and circuit breakers are two commonly used mechanisms for overload protection. So discussing fuse. A fuse contains a short piece of wire which melts if too much current flows through it. This effectively disconnects the power supply from its load and equipment stops working until the problem that caused the overload is identified and the fuse is replaced. Some power supplies use a very thin wire link soldered in place as a fuse. Fuses in power supply units may be replaceable by the end user but fuses in consumer equipment may require tools to assess and change. Next we have circuit breakers. A circuit breaker contains an element that heats, bends and triggers a spring which shuts the circuit down. Once the element cools and problem is identified, the breaker can be reset and the power restored. Next we have Current limiting. Some supplies use current limiting instead of cutting off power if overloaded. The two types of current limiting used are electronic limiting and impedance limiting. The former is common on lab bands 
PS US the latter is common on supplies of less than 3 watt output next we have fold back current limiter a fold back current limiter reduces the output current to much less than the maximum non fold current you can see the graphs too now moving to its applications power supplies are a fundamental component of many electronic devices and therefore used in diverse range of applications this list is small sample of the many applications of power supplies computers welding electric vehicles aircraft automation and medical firstly we have computers A modern computer power supply is a switch mode power supply that converts AC power from the main supply to several DC voltages. Switch mode supplies replace linear supplies due to cost, weight, efficiency and size improvements. The diverse collection of output voltages also have widely varying current draw requirements. Next we have electric vehicles. Electric vehicles are those which rely on energy created through electricity generation. So next we have welding. Arc welding uses electricity to join metals by melting them. The electricity is provided by welding power supply and can either be AC or DC. Some types of welding can use as few as 10 amperes while some applications of sport welding employ current as high as 60,000 amperes for an extremely short time. So moving to aircraft both commercial and military avionic systems require either a DC to DC or AC DC power supply to convert energy into usable voltage So moving to automation this refers to conveyors assembly lines barcode readers cameras motors pumps semi fabricated manufacturing and more The last application we have is medical. These includes ventilators, infusion pumps, surgical and dental instruments, imaging and beds. This is all about power supply. Thank you.